This is the way my engine used to look. One cylinder and a flywheel. And it did work, but not really well enough to be useful. So I wanted to add another cylinder. But first, we had to open it up for cleaning, and so I could remove a few of the seals. And it wasn't very easy. There's something bending. Yeah, it's bending. <laughs> You don't have a big pipe spanner now. I bought one. Did you? 50 <laughs> from the pound shop. Oh, God's <laughs> Hang on, you can be a Well, it might have worked. It might have worked. Something happened. <laughs> I think it might have turned that way. It feels like it worked. It feels like it's, yeah. Now, I want you to eat your words. <laughs> the cup of tea. It's a quality tool there from the old uh, pound shop. Very high quality. These cylinders are really old hydraulic rams, probably top link rams from a tractor. Usually they're filled with hydraulic oil, but they work with compressed air too. Now lots of you suggested that I should use both strokes of the piston. So it's pushed in as well as out. And of course that makes sense up to a point. I'd need another set of valves for that and another pair of cams to operate them, which would be okay. But I decided against it because these particular cylinders are so narrow that the piston rod itself takes up a large proportion of the moving area. When the air is pushing on this side of the seal, there's an area of around three and a half square inches to push against. But if it's pushing on the other side, then the piston rod itself takes up one and a half square inches. So that leaves only two square inches. And so I might end up not gaining a lot despite all the work involved. Now, of course, if I had fatter pistons and cylinders, then making them double acting would make more sense. And not so you said that's what I need, but I don't have any of those. <laughs> I can't just go and buy new cylinders. They're very expensive things. So I'm sticking with just pushing these ones out. Single acting pistons. The momentum in the flywheel should push them back in again. Now for neatness, I wanted to put the second piston down opposite the first one, but that way there would be a large part of each rotation that wouldn't be powered. Some people told me that two pistons at 90 degrees to each other would mean that it would always be possible to start the engine from any position. But that's only true if they're both double acting ones. With two single acting pistons, the best arrangement has to be 180 degrees. And even then, there are two areas where neither one is being pushed. So three pistons would be better, but I only have two. In theory, I could have arranged them like this and still have them working 180 degrees out of sync. But I would need a crankshaft that doubles back on itself and that looked a bit tricky to make and would probably need another bearing. So instead, I took the old engine apart and set up both pistons horizontally. It takes up more space, but that's the only downside that I can see. And I can use the same cams for both sets of valves, which makes things really simple. I can adjust the opening of the valves by moving them forwards or backwards here. And of course, the cams and the push rods do the timing. I took your advice and shortened the length of time that the inlet valves are open, uh, which saves some air for sure. And you're right, I could do with better airflow from the compressor, but keeping things the same as that last time, I can at least compare this version to the last one. Enough yabbering, Tim. Show us what it does. All right, then.
<laughs> Slow speed start. Now, look at that, what fun. And it makes all the right noises too. I'm running it very slowly, around 45 RPM, so you can see what's happening. This is probably the slowest it can run at. Right then, let's crank it up a bit. Woohoo! <laughs> it goes to around 100 RPM now. Pretty impressive, I think, but there is quite a lot of vibration and clanking going on. The two unpowered parts of each rotation mean that sometimes it won't start by itself, so I need to give it a little push. Now the question is, does it have enough power to do anything useful yet? And I don't really know. If it was geared down to an 8 inch wheel, then it would surely go along on a level track. But could it pull anything? Hmm. I could open up the port to let more air in and out. And that would help a lot with the speed and the power. But of course then I'd need more air or steam to run it. And I'd need to beef up the frame a lot too. Also, at the moment, this engine only goes in one direction. So I need to figure out some way of either reversing the engine or else reversing the output to the wheels. So it's going to get a bit complicated. But all in all, I'm really pleased with it. Very satisfying to make something animate out of old bits and bobs. Now the next step in this project might be converting it to run on steam. But that would mean changing the seals and the tubing. As well as finding a way to generate all that steam, of course. Or perhaps I should stick to compressed air. And instead find a way to fill and carry cylinders on a loco which would be an interesting project too, wouldn't it? Could I make a windmill that would work a high pressure compressor? And how long would it take to fill a cylinder? And how long would that last? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs>